Hi Pisces, Happy New Year. Welcome to January 2021. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. Before I start your reading, I want to call in some good energy. So this month we have Mars moving into Taurus, which is favorable to your sign. And it's going to conjunct Uranus at the beginning of the month. And then we have a new moon in Capricorn, which is also favorable to your sign. Uh, and that's on the 12th and or 13th, depending on where you live. And then on the 14th, Uranus moves direct after having been retrograde for about six months. And then we have a full moon in Leo on the 28th of January. And then Mercury in Aquarius goes retrograde on the 30th. So we have a lot of things, planets changing signs, planets changing direction. Let's see what Pisces needs to know about love and relationships for the month of January 2021. What is coming up for January 2021? What is coming up for January 2021? What is coming up January 2021? What does Pisces need to know about love and relationships for January 2021? Oh. The Death card. The Four of Pentacles. The Tower. The Five of Pentacles. The Seven of Wands. The Five of Swords, the Two of Wands, the Nine of Wands, the World, the Fool, and the card on the bottom of the deck is the Sun. I mean the Four of Wands. <laughs> okay, so the Death card. Things are, you're going through major changes this month. You've already started the change with the Tower. The Tower's in the past. But the Death, it doesn't mean Death. What it really means is the end of a cycle. Something is coming to completion. You've got the world and the death card that both mean the end of a cycle. Something is ending. And you have an opportunity for a brand new beginning, but you're holding, you're holding on. So you could be holding on to something because you don't want to see it end. And you know you're going through some major changes. The tower in the past, this could be um, news that came in that was shocking or some sudden revelation that caused um, you to wake up. It's, it's, it's a wake-up call, the tower. Um, whatever the tower, if you're on the wrong path, if you're living in um, a bubble of illusion, the tower experience, you see lightning striking, that's, the, that's the truth hitting you and waking you up. And once you see the truth, you can't unsee it. So you're, something is being revealed and um, you're realizing that you have to start a new path. You have to start a new cycle. Um, whatever the tower breaks down or takes away, it's really for your better. It's for the best because you're not wasting your time on the wrong path or on the wrong person or in the wrong situation, whether it's a relationship or a job situation. Whatever it is, the tower will take. If you're on the wrong path, the tower will destroy it. And it will free you to find the right path. And that's where this fool comes in. This is setting you up on the right path. So, and you have the five of pentacles here. This is a card of financial instability or depression. Uh, you might be coming through a period where you're feeling isolated, cut off from the people that you love. You might be struggling financially. You might be going through some kind of depressive period, or you could be helping someone through this type of problem. There could be someone coming to you for comfort or advice or even financial support. Someone that you feel you need to take care of. Um, that could also be um, the situation of the Five of Pentacles. Um, but this influence is leaving, so I feel like that's not going to be in your future, but this is something you might still be dealing with a little bit. Maybe you're holding on too tightly to someone that you need to let go of. The Seven of Wands coming up in the future, the Seven of Wands is about standing your ground, standing up for what you believe in. 
and maybe setting some boundaries. So you might have to set some boundaries around um, relationships. If you think someone is taking advantage of your kindness or you're giving too much in a relationship, you know, you might be, because Pisces is very compassionate and you like to save people and you like to nurture and heal people. So if someone comes to you, you know, with a problem, you want to help, you want to heal. And sometimes, you know, because Pisces is so compassionate and you always see the best in everyone, you may overgive. So this is telling you, stand up for what you believe in, help someone, but also set some boundaries. Don't let, you know, someone overstep the boundary and take, take more than they deserve. Especially with this Five of Swords here. This is the card of victimization. You may feel like you're being victimized in a situation or you're dealing with someone's hostility. Um, what you have to realize, and you, with the Tower, you may have had a sudden realization about a person that you're involved in. And you may realize that, well, what you have to realize, the lesson of this card is, this person is not going to change. If you want to stay with this relationship, this is for some people, if you want to stay with this relationship, you have to accept this person for who they are because they're not going to change. If you can't deal with the person and you, you know, stop wasting your energy trying to change them, you may need to just cut your losses and move on. So I think that's a decision you're going to be making, you know, and with the death card, the death is about accepting that some cycle has ended, accepting that something is over. And you may be preventing this new start because you're holding on to the past. You're holding on to the old cycle. You don't want to let go. So as soon as you decide to let go and you realize, okay, um, I see what I need to do now. I need to accept that this is over. I need to start focusing on the future. Where do I go from here? Um, and learn from the past and so that you don't repeat the same mistakes. Then you are clearing out and making room for the new. And I feel like if you haven't experienced the new yet, uh, it's because you're holding on to the old. So it's really important for you to see what needs to be let go of. What do you need to let go? What do you need to clear out that's no longer working? You know, get rid of any toxic relationships or toxic energy if you're in a work situation or with anyone. It could even be friendships. Something where you're trying, you're bashing your head against a brick wall and nothing is changing. Stop doing it. Just give up. Walk away. Uh, two of Wands is here. You have the potential to partner with someone, but it's in your negative thinking sector. So you're kind of like playing a wait and see game right now. Like, where is this all going to work out? How is it all going to work out? Um, you know, you might be planting some seeds and waiting to see how they're going to grow and develop. The Nine of Wands, you've been working really hard. This is in your environment. So this, I feel like some issue or problem that you thought you solved in a relationship may come back to be dealt with again this month because the nine of wands is like being prepared and giving it that one last battle you, like you you have that final battle coming up and it it may come out during the full moon in leo when you have that final wake up and realization and that'll be at the end of the month especially because mercury will be going retrograde so it could bring somebody from the past your wish fulfillment the world card Something is com completing. A cycle is completing. Now, in some cases, the world could mean everything coming together in a good way. You know, you're finding your path. You're finding, you know, you're completing something. You're feeling good. You're feeling freed. If you embrace the changes, you're going to feel a sense of freedom. And you could find yourself uh, moving up to another level, starting a new cycle. You know, maybe you're ending one cycle, but you're moving into something even better. But you still, it's like you don't want to let go. Maybe this situation represents financial security for you or some type of security. And you're afraid if I let go of this, you know, will I still have that financial support? Because this is a worry. This five of pentacles is like worried about money, finances. Um, but you have to believe in yourself. And you have to believe that, hey, I can do this. So, and, and another reason, another uh, meaning behind the nine of wands is... You're really close to achieving an important goal. Don't give up. Um, if anything is holding you back, it's yourself for holding on to something that's not working. So if something is not working, let it go. If something, if the tower is taking something away, if you find something crumbling, or you feel like you're existing in a situation where you feel oppressed and you can't um, express yourself in a healthy way, or 
um, you're not free, it's time to release that toxic energy. Don't hold on. It's like you're holding on to the, a sinking ship and you're going to go, you don't want to drown. You want to grab the lifeboat because the lifeboat is here. The Fool card. The Fool card um, puts you on a brand new path. And it may be a little scary. I think that's part of, you know, we get comfortable even with our pain. You know, it's like, yeah, I know the devil I know is better than the one I don't know. So you get comfortable in your situation. You don't want to move out of it, even if it's better for you. Um, until the pain becomes so great. Usually what happens is when the pain of staying becomes greater than the pain of leaving, that's when you let go and you make the change. But the fool is beckoning you to a new life. Trust your intuition. If you're feeling inside, like I need to do something different, I need to go, trust those feelings, trust those thoughts. It's your unconscious speaking to you. It's your divine um, guidance trying to reach you. And that's what this, this lightning strike, it's like, it's, you know, it's striking the tower, it's destroying any false beliefs, anything that you're not seeing clearly. The lightning, you know, the light is going to illuminate the darkness and suddenly you see it's like inspiration you get this sudden you know um moment of awareness where you suddenly see the truth and you know that you need to move to a, in a on a new path and here's your opportunity to move into that new path so don't give up on a dream or a goal um there could be some toxic energy around you that's preventing you from achieving that goal so hold on to that vision hold on to that dream and just just cut away anything that's that's blocking you that's that's draining your energy so let's see this new moon is happening in your 11th house in capricorn and it is um that's the house of hopes and dreams and wish fulfillment and the groups and friendships so you have a chance to join new groups um create new friendships it's a brand new beginning um, and to achieve something that you've always wanted for a long time, because this new moon is con is conjunct Pluto. Pluto is a power. It's about power. So you could be connecting with very powerful people, movers and shakers, and they may be starting a new project, and you may just get they want you to join them, or you want to, you know you might be getting involved in something that is very transformative, that's going to transform the world in some way, or transform society in some way. Very powerful energy. This new moon. It's a very powerful new beginning. And it's in your wish fulfillment sector. So you want to, you know, go after your dreams this month. Don't give up the fight. Um, in your 12th house, you have Saturn, Jupiter, and Mercury. So that's a clearing out. The, you know, the 12th house is the end of a cycle. And all these planets in the 12th are bringing up psychological issues. Anything that's hidden is going to come out especially um, at the full moon in Leo, which we'll talk about in a minute. So Saturn, you know, you're, you're, it's time to throw out the garbage, throw out your psychological garbage. Jupiter is helping you. Jupiter is your guardian angel in the 12th house. So you have some powerful help behind the scenes. And so, and Mercury in the 12th, um, you could be working on something, a project that's hidden right now. It's not ready to, to see the light of day yet. You know, it's something that you're working on behind the scenes. Um, it may be something that involves communication. Mars and, um, or it's science or technology. Mars is conjunct Jupiter this month. Mars is in, moving into Taurus in your third house. So you want to watch your communication style. Because when Mars is in the third house, you may come across, you may sound like you're fighting every time you have a conversation with someone. So in a debate, you may be overly harsh with your communication. And Mars conjunct Uranus, you know, you may blurt something out that you may not have, wouldn't have normally said. Um, you might be dealing with people that are very stubborn because it's, you know, third house is Taurus energy. And the third house is also siblings, you know, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. So you might be dealing with family members that are kind of stubborn. And you may just lose your temper with them, with Mars there. Or there might be some eruption that happens uh, where you clear the air. Um, so just make sure you're not revealing secrets that, or something that needs to be kept secret because you have this 12th house energy squaring this 3rd house energy so something behind the scenes may come out and it could lead to an argument Venus is in your 11th house when Venus moves into the 11th 
in Capricorn. Uh, it brings money. It, so whatever you're working on that has to this new beginning, it can be very lucrative. It can bring love and it can bring money. Um, you might be connecting with different friendships or you might, if you're not attached in a relationship, you might meet someone through the groups that you know or the friends that you know. Um, and Venus is square in Chiron. You have Chiron in your second house. So you may have some wounds around money or self-esteem that you need to work out that might be preventing you from finding love or from attracting the money that you deserve. Um, so you want to work on that also. And Uranus will be going direct in your... Let's see what house. In your 12th house. No, wait. What am I saying? In, the, in your third house. I'm sorry. So if there was anything that was on hold in terms of communication or something going on, because um, the third house is the house of communication. It's the house of relatives. If anything was kind of like stagnant, it's going to start to move. Things are going to start to move and change. You might get involved in a new communications project or an internet project or something involving technology. Now, the full moon is happening in your sixth house. Sixth and, tw and the sun will be in your twelfth house. So something around your work environment is coming to completion. Something is being revealed. And that could also mean some kind of health issue because the sixth house is also the house of health. So um, you're going to have some type of realization um, again, Mars and Uranus are in your third house, and this is like your local environment. So whenever Mar Uranus and Mars are in your travel houses, you want to be careful driving. Don't drive when you're angry. Pay attention. You know, you might be arguing with someone on the phone, and you're driving, and, and you don't want to get into an accident because you're being distracted. So pay attention to driving. Um, the other way that, um, and because this Mars and Uranus are going to be T-squaring this full moon. So be careful with travel around the full moon and be careful about communication around the full moon and how you're communicating because you don't want to create, you know, some kind of incident with your relatives. Or there could also be some surprising developments around family, like aunts, uncles, cousins. In the 11th house, you also have around this full moon, Venus conjunct Pluto. Now, when Venus and Pluto come together, that is powerful, powerful emotions Pat, powerful. If you meet someone during this influence, it'll be very passionate connection. A friendship could turn to love, and it could be very passionate. Uh, strong feelings are involved. You know, you might feel um, a strong desire for someone, or the, the emotions are just very strong. You have to watch out for power struggles. If it doesn't, rep if Venus and Pluto do not represent love, it could also represent money, and there could be someone wielding power that has a lot of money. So if you're involved in some type of group project and you're waiting to get funded, um, the person who's holding the purse strings may wield their power and may demand, make a lot of demands. So just be aware of that. Um, but generally, the eleventh house, there is there are powerful people that are going to help you achieve a goal or a dream, but you may have to defer to a higher power during this time. So um, just be aware of that because the people involved are very powerful. They're movers and shakers. Um, but overall, I think this is a great time for you to deal with some kind of psychological issue, especially issues that have to do with with, with your family or, or siblings. You could really get to the bottom of something and um, work that out. You could release some baggage, some emotional baggage around your communication style, your thinking style. Um, there could be major changes in your with your siblings, some unexpected developments. Uh, so you just want to be prepared, but you're also getting ready to achieve a goal or a dream this month with this with this um, fool in your chart as an outcome. The fool as an outcome is like just release. Let go. The, the cycle, a cycle is ending. Let go. It's the past. You, you've been there, done that. It's time for something new. So embrace the new this month, Pisces. And I think you'll be fine. Just don't hold on to something that is no longer serving you. And you will be fine. You'll find yourself really fulfilled. The world represents fulfillment. Finding your place in the world where you feel like you're in a state of grace and everything's working out. I think this new beginning can be really transformative for you and really bring you a lot of joy because you're going to be finally doing work that you really love or 
it, especially in a relationship, you might be finally meeting someone that you could really have a good relationship with. So this is my forecast for January. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click on the link in the description box. Uh, and Or click, click on the like button, I mean, click on the subscribe button. If you want a private reading, click on the link in the description box and we can go deeper into your personal situation with a personal reading. And um, I just want to say thank you, everyone, for supporting this channel, for liking, subscribing, ordering readings, um, commenting. I really enjoy reading all the comments. So um, embrace change this month. It's going to lead you to a better path or a new beginning that you'll be happy with. And enjoy January. Have a happy new year. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.